if Maliki doesn't stay in there for another couple more weeks, what, are, what do you think your country is doing in order to protect your interests, mm -hmm. and how are you working to align with other partners? All right, remember, keep in mind, I don't speak for the government anymore. I'm speaking for me and Jeff. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm going to say is, is, is harsh, and perhaps a little edgy. But if we have to choose the lesser of evils here, the lesser evil is the Sunnis over the Shiites. For the reason you're I not speaking before. for me. OK, it's a lesser evil. It's an evil, believe me, it's a terrible evil. Again, they've just taken out 1,700 former Iraqi soldiers and shot them in a field. But who are they, who are they fighting against? They're fighting against, the, against the, a proxy with Iran that's complicit in the murder of 160,000 people in Syria. You can just you know, do the math. And again, one side is armed with suicide bombers and rockets. The other side has access to military nuclear capabilities. So from Israel's perspective, um, you know, if someone's got, if, if, if there's got to be an evil that's going to prevail, you know, let, let the, the Sunni evil prevail. And I, again, I'm speaking entirely for myself. As the Sykes-Pico system breaks down, um, that, you know, Israel has got to guard its borders. We have built a high-tech fence very quickly along our Egyptian border. We're building a high-tech fence along our Syrian border. We have a primary interest in maintaining the stability of Jordan. Our, our security border is not the Jordanian-Israeli border. It's the Jordanian-Iraqi border. Jordan, among other things, is what keeps that mess out of our backyards. And we'll be working to shore up Jordan. And I know when I was in war Washington and working on the Hill, I was always working to shore up Jordan. Um, very important for us. We're going to, uh, we're going to have to hunker down for a while. One of the most amazing things, I understand we're, we're coming to an end. You know, well, I was, um, a couple of people saw me in Chicago, Lee, this week. Well, I was in Chicago briefing you on the depressing situation in the Middle East. My wife was getting into a helicopter and helicoptering down to Masada to see a high-tech Cirque du Soleil type um, production of La Traviata. <laughs> right? 7,000 people with, with great images projected up on Masada. And this is all going on in Israel. There's this fabulous food in Tel Aviv. People are on the beaches. And every once in a while, you've got to stop and think that if Sally got into a car at Masada and drove four hours northward, she'd be in downtown Damascus. If you got in a car and drove six hours southward, you'd be in Tahrir Square. If you drove an hour eastward, you'd be in Mafraq, which is the second largest city in Jordan today, and it's a refugee camp size of San Francisco. If you drove three and a half hours from La Traviata Masada, you'd be in the front of the fighting in Iraq. Right. This is all going. Israel, is, Israel would be an extraordinary country if it was happening in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that it's happening in the middle of this insanity, this madness, has got to be one of our towering experiences. Our towers achievements. I'm sounding like an ambassador again. I'm sorry. Yeah, I get sorry. Uh, sometimes you just can't, can't wean yourself of this stuff. But, um, but it really is extraordinary uh, that this is going on. But we're, we have to be aware while we're watching La Traviata that there's real La Traviata out there and that um, we're going to have to defend ourselves in all sorts of um, conventional, non conventional ways.